speaking of the primary process, my next guest says America is not a pure democracy. He points out that the notion of one man, one vote was never accepted by the founding fathers. Renowned civil rights lawyer, Harvard law professor, and author, Alan Dershowitz, is with me now. Alan, it is great to see you. Thanks Thank you. for coming my in. My pleasure. So is the primary process fair? My guess is no, that's not the way it's supposed to be. But I want to hear from you. Well, it's fair in the sense the rules were established in advance. Everybody knew what the rules were when they decided to run for president. Is it the best system? No, it's not the best system. First of all, you win overwhelmingly in a state which is not going to go for you in the general election, and you get a lot of delegates. That makes no sense at all. Second, the smaller states, the least influential, often go first, and so knock candidates out of the race. Yeah, New we York had, is all excited. Normally, this is kind of buttoned up it's by usually this over. It's usually yeah. over by this point. But, you know, the framers did not intend a democracy. They were frightened of democracy. It's a republic if you can keep it, said one of the founders. And the Electoral College, you know, people forget 2000, a guy named Gore won the presidency of the United States by having more votes than a guy named Bush. But Bush became president because of the Electoral College. And so, yes, why should we be surprised that we have something less than a pure democracy in the way we nominate people. Let me ask you, though, as a legal expert, for example, the Trump campaign says that the Cruz campaign is following the letter, rather the letter of the law, not the spirit of the law, and therefore the system is rigged. From an argument, logical argument standpoint, what would you say? You should always follow the letter of the law. That's the law. The spirit of the law is vague. You can be very general. What do you think the spirit of the law is? The letter of the law is what has to be followed. It's interesting to me to hear some of the same people who want to see Hillary Clinton indicted for her emails when clearly she did not do anything that violated the law because what she did at the time was perfectly legal and none of the material was classified. Now they're complaining, oh, we have to follow, we, we can't follow the letter of the law, we have to change the rules. Well, you can't change the rules retroactively. There's a provision of the Constitution, talk about the spirit, Ex post facto. What the law is at the time is what you have to follow. Well, and the law is the letter, not the spirit. Her defense, indeed. I want to stay with the Democratic candidate since you mentioned Hillary Clinton. You say one thing that concerns you greatly about Senator Sanders and his campaign, his foreign policy, is that he is not pro Israel and you feel like the general American public doesn't realize to what extent that is true. Oh, he's very not pro Israel because he is second guessing Israel's ability to defend its own citizens from the kind of bus explosion we saw yesterday, terror tunnels we saw the day before. He's never been to Israel. Oh, he was there 30 years ago, was in a kibbutz from a very left wing. Let him go to Stay Road, where President Obama went. And when he saw the rockets coming, he said, if rockets were coming at my children, I would do anything in my so power President to stop Obama them. President Obama has taken a lot of criticism for not being pro-Israel, but you're saying Senator Sanders is actually less protective than the It's not even close. Obama has been very good on Israel's security. He said Israel should defend itself against the tunnels. But what Sanders is saying is, 10,000 people were killed at 700. He's saying Israel acted disproportionately. That's a code word. The problem I see is that he is appealing to the hard left, anti-Israel, not progressives, repressives. The people who don't want you to have free speech rights, the people who bust up dem demonstrations and well, political he's a democratic events. socialist, so he has said, tax the rich, let's give some free programs out. But we have seen in the past it doesn't work, at least not in a country. But I'm worried states. more about his supporters than I am about him. You get organizations like Move On. You get people from Black Lives Matter who are perfectly willing to say, we can't respect anybody, we have to break up demonstrations, stop other people from speaking. Free speech for me, but not for the I want to hear Bernie Sanders renounce those people who are supporting him. I don't think he has the guts to do it because he'll lose votes. Ellen, I want to ask you before we let you go, you taught Senator Cruz at Harvard, right? Yeah. And you said he was a brilliant student. Brilliant. What do you make of his campaign and the idea that he could be the nominee? Well, I'm shocked that he's done as well as he has done because his views are quite far right. Yeah, he's but he has understood the law. He's taken advantage of all the little technicalities. He's a great lawyer and uh, he's proved to be a somewhat better politician than I would have guessed. I recently introduced him in an event and I said I like Ted so much. I wanted to stay in the Senate forever and ever and ever. We need a Ted Cruz in the Senate. Just one. Uh, but he's not my candidate for president. But I like him personally. As a professor I have to tell the truth. He was one of the smartest students 
I ever had. Let the public make a choice as to whether they like his policies. Alan, come back. It's a Anytime. lot of subjects covered. Alan Dershowitz with me there, renowned civil rights lawyer and Harvard professor.